In the old tradition of alchemy, there was a symbolic vision of the bright sun being eaten and transformed by the green lion. The sun represents all the ways we feel like life should move forward. The feeling that the world will revolve around our intellect and decisions and the way we perform our lives. The green lion represents the innate wild instincts deep within the body and subconscious, helping to transform the sun and help it to remember the gifts of being alive. At first, this encounter with the wild nature of the green lion coming out from the world of spirit and the uncanny can seem overwhelming, terrifying, the end of something. The sun fears this change as an ending, but the devouring process allows for a truer version of life to emerge. In many images, you'll see the new version of the sun emerging from a large body of water, from the deep subconscious of the spirit, to allow a new expression to emerge. This November is one filled with the spirit of this green lion and its wild influence on our lives. Where we think it's about speed and hurrying up to make something, many of us will be finding a communion with this wild spirit and a reevaluation of what we have been pursuing. What once seemed like the ultimate goal now seems to fade into the background in favor of something that feels more like home, like resonance, like a beginning that actually reflects the real you underneath the pursuit of greatness, the new sun rising beyond the horizon in ways we never thought possible. Hello, my beautiful friends, my fellow space blobs and sparkly blobs or whatever sensitive form you are taking in your life right now. I'm so happy to have you here and welcome to my Lestat moment. I am so in love with this shirt that I thrifted, red satin with ruffles. I feel like Lestat and that makes me feel really happy. It's those little moments of joy, you know, in life. We got to take them when they come and thrifting this shirt and feeling like Lestat is definitely a moment of joy for me. And we're going to just take some time to move through some broader themes and feel through this November and feel empowered to work with it. Sometimes when I sit down to do these chats, I wonder how naive I might be in what I'm sharing, because I know that the world keeps changing and that new energies keep coming in, new questions keep coming in, new challenges keep coming in, and our world continues to change. And I can sit here a few days before November begins and think through the month, think through some of the bigger energies, and yet there will still be so many twists and turns in that process for this world on the larger global scale, as well as in our communities and in our personal lives. And there's no way that we can encapsulate that in a little November chat. However, I was thinking about how, what I hope to do here for myself, as well as anybody else who sits down to join me is find the courage and the peace to keep being here in ways that feel profound and impactful and even just quiet and gentle and beautiful. It doesn't always have to be about making ripples through the world. There's so much pressure to be something great. And I'm just hoping that this time can help those of us who are feeling through a lot of this feel a little bit of that groundedness and that safety. And so that's what that's what we're doing here. And it's also just themes that I think are coming up for many of us in our process as we are changing. So many of us are changing rapidly right now and figuring out new ingredients, figuring out who we're becoming. And it, it's a lot of information and there's a lot of shift going on while at the same time, so much mystery ahead. And I think it's so helpful to just have these conversations and acknowledge knowledge that is happening. It's not just in your head. It's not just something that you're going through alone. And I think this November is going to have so many helpful, energetic connection points for us to work with. So let's get into this November and some of the themes that I'm really noticing starting to peek out. November is such a unique and interesting month because it's right near the end of this calendar year. And sometimes that can come with this sense of pressure and this need to complete a whole bunch of stuff before the end of the year, while at the same time, especially here in the Northern Hemisphere, the energy is slowing down. It's going underneath the ground. It's going into the hidden process 
of how we create a life, how we plant seeds that winter over and we won't see again until the spring. And so there's sometimes these very conflicting messages, I think, going on from different perspectives of time and place and process. And that can make it feel a little bit like there's a fr- friction and a tension. Um, but I was thinking about this recently in my own process because so many new visions have been coming in and they're a little ways off from really being lived, you know? And I was thinking about how transmutation, that idea of transforming and changing and becoming our next selves will often feel a little bit like failure or going backwards for a little while, or maybe even like there's a void. And that's like such an innate natural part of it. And yet we feel so much shame for feeling that void or that sense of failure, that sense of something closing down or ending. And like we couldn't sustain something in the same fashion for a while. And part of, I think, the magic and mystery of working with November's energetics this year is about allowing ourselves to just have that little bit of discomfort with that sense of a void being there, you know, a vacuum being there so that new things can come in and that we are really allowed to go toward that vacuum and not resist it so much, not feel so much shame about it because seasons of change really require that vacuum. And, you know, our entire culture, so much of it is about avoiding vacuums at all costs, fill the space, fill the space, fill your process don't ever stop. And November, I think, is a time where that requirement for that void and vacuum feeling is very, very high. And there's, once again, that sense of friction where the external world saying, wrap up your projects, make sure you're doing a lot, make sure you're checking boxes off, make sure you know what you're doing for next year. And the other side of that is that there's this sense of like, no, I need to make space. I need to listen into that those silent places and I need to move toward kind of places that maybe I'm scared to look at in myself. It's so interesting, right? Because I keep talking about this is a season where a lot of times we're slowing down, we're doing this internal process, but in a in a funny way it's also a season of quickening where the transform transformative process is asking for us to begin and be there and witness our fears around how we're changing and witness what it is that cannot stay the same where that river has become polluted and congested where we need to show up and just be there with it and witness it and i think that's sometimes the intimidation factor of november's energy in any given year is this facing in, this deep, deep facing in. I know Jung was a big proponent that people are will avoid facing and knowing themselves and expressing themselves and becoming themselves because it's the most terrifying work of our lives. And I think November has that quality to it. And yet once we get in there, there's so much beauty. There's so much to witness. And there's a really deep calling to pay attention to that. And I know we talk about that every month, but it's it's very present right now. And there's this just interesting process at work. The next theme that I think is really powerful for this November, it's tied to some things that are starting to come into the fold of our dynamics when it comes to Mercury moving into Sagittarius at the beginning of the month. And then at the end of the month, beginning its retrograde, we also have Mars moving into Leo this month and next month in December, it is beginning its retrograde that will move through both Leo and Cancer. So we're working with two fire signs, Mercury and Mars, who are often very visionary, very forward moving, working in their retrograde fashion in fire signs. And so we're, we're going to start feeling the influence of both Mercury and Mars in these fire signs, beginning their pre-shadow phase before their retrogrades, which is going to start with reworking what we think is important, how we're using our energy, what brings us to life and remembering ourselves, like remembering pieces of our souls that want translation and expression and actually seeing them. But this brings me to a a quality to the way November might feel for some of us. I think I'm already feeling this influence before we even step into November. And it's definitely something that I'm working with really every day, which is that going slow will probably save you time, 
but it also might not. And I'll explain this a little bit. I'm sure it makes sense to you all if you hear that. Because a lot of times in this space and in general, in spaces where we do story and we work with time, you'll, you know, we'll talk about this idea that going slow is fast. That, you know, when we stop trying to rush through things, when we stop trying to do it all, we actually have a lot less resistance to the process and it tends to flow a lot better. And I know many of us here have explored that many times in our lives in all sorts of formats throughout time. And we've learned this time and again. And that is very true. It's a very true thing that when we take some of that pressure off and when we stop trying to rush through it, it is easier for the process to do its work and do its magic and do its thing. However, it also might not save you time. And that's the point. It's not always about getting ahead of the game, saving time, running around, getting it done faster, getting it done better. That isn't always the goal. That isn't always the end thing that we are trying to go toward. And yet, you know, everything in our culture is like, well, okay, as long as it's saving me time, I guess I'll slow down and make it more efficient. November and just these energies, like I mentioned with Mercury and Mars, it's like the the point isn't to save time and make it as streamlined as possible. The point is to be on the road. The point is to be on the journey. The point is to just let that journey be what it is and stop resisting it so much, stop resisting ourselves so much, stop using our vital life force to try and like make all these things happen. And so it's a very interesting time where accepting going at whatever pace you're going at, because what is slow, what is fast anyway, all of that is so relative and very difficult to actually define. So whatever pace you're going at, learning to accept it, Learning to work with it, learning to lean into it is going to be a really, really big theme this November. And I tell you what, I am definitely working with this. Um, And it's both like sometimes I am slowing down and things are just flowing so much easier and I'm able to do a lot of things. And sometimes I'm slowing down and I'm slowing down and and not much is happening. And I am just working with those seeds that have been planted under the ground that I probably won't see come to life till May, you know, June. They're going to winter over. They're going to take their time. They're going to have to come out from the snows that are on the ground in the in the late spring, in the early spring and come to life slowly, you know. But regardless, the, the, the sense of speed and quality and all of that is going to be really kind of interesting and funny in November, I think. But also, I think the more we can just relax into that, the better. And then I had one final theme that was coming up for me around November that is actually tied to my sweet little dog, Bjorn Bae who is a little Brittany dog. Uh, they're not that common uh, in the world. They're more common in Southern Europe, and there's an American version regardless. I have a very sensitive dog. He's a hunting dog, so he has very heightened hearing and smell, and he's there to point and hear and smell and find things. And so he is very sensitive to the world around him. He's very noise sensitive. We live in a big city. We live here in Stockholm, and we live in a quieter neighborhood at this point, but... He still finds it very overwhelming to be outside and we're working with him. And those of you who have dogs or work with animals know that so much of it is about energy. It's not about what we say. It's not about what we're trying to make happen. It's about the way we hold our energy. And I've been really reflecting on the way I hold my energy when I'm walking with him, when we're working together, when we're doing things together. And for a long time, I've been trying to use this very cheerful, very American motivational voice with him where I'm like, come on, we can do it. Yeah, you know. And a few weeks ago, we were walking and I realized that energy is so, it's not peaceful. It's not peaceful. It's not centered. It's very scattered in a way, you know, and like, there's so much motivational stuff out there where it's people saying, yeah, get out, get on the road, make it happen. (laughs) You can do it. And it, it's the same kind of scattered feeling. When I hear that, I don't feel the center. I don't feel like I can handle the different noises and experiences of the world around me. It doesn't make me feel that way. It makes me feel like I need to scatter my energy to the four winds. And I had this realization, I was holding that energy for my dog. And I just took a moment 
and I slowed down and I came into like my deeper voice, you know, my chest voice, like the voice from my solar plexus, from my root. And I said, yeah, it's all good. And my energy changed and the way that we were walking together changed. I could tell that he felt that resonance of that calm, centered voice. And I realized like how much that voice, the one that says, I'm allowed to live in peace. I'm safe in this moment of not knowing, of the void, of the, the change. I can take this one step. I can look and smell. I can take a moment to look around and then continue walking in a very centered way. And it's so amazing. That's, I think, what's so amazing about being with animals is they help you. We, they help us see ourselves so well and reflect back our energy so well and show us how we're holding our energy. And it just made me realize in the process of finding our paths and going on our journeys that thinking about just like the tones of voice we use with ourselves to maybe inspire ourselves or work with ourselves and everybody's different. Maybe you need a different tone of voice, but for me using that kind of energy on myself has really changed the way I'm thinking about that transmutational process and that deep diving and that becoming of myself and witnessing of myself that is coming up so deeply at this time. Is anybody else this is something I want to know. Is anybody else experiencing that where it's like you're getting to know these elements of yourself that either you had when you were a kid and they got buried by all the stuff of life and now they're coming back up to be remembered or aspects of yourself that are completely surprising you. They feel new. They feel like they're revealing new parts of your journey that you have to go find and explore. And in doing that witnessing, I know for me, I really need that calm, centered, quiet voice to hold me. So those are some of the themes that are coming up for me. Uh, I know they're quite broad, but I think it's helpful to have a bit of that broad structure to think about moving through November to kind of help slowly move into it. So finally, I just want to go over this Mercury and Sagittarius and Mars and Leo process that's beginning in November because I think it's so fascinating to think about these very impactful creative energies in fire signs. So Mercury enters Sagittarius on November 2nd. It's going to begin its retrograde on November 25th and then do its thing for a few weeks and then move back out of Sagittarius on January 8th. So it's going to spend just over two months in Sagittarius and Mercury in one sign for two months is quite a while for it. And it's so fascinating to me because the process that we are going to be working with through this long Mercury and Sagittarius transit has to do with the way we're envisioning our lives, like reworking our big picture dreaming, which is huge. I know we're always workshopping that, like it's just an innate part of being a human. We're always thinking like, what what am I doing next? How is that going to look? How does it all tie together? But there's something really powerful going on with this retrograde where it's like, the visions and the way we're thinking about it and the cosmology, the way we fit ourselves into the world that we are in is changing deeply. And one of the most important elements of Mercury moving through Sagittarius for the next two months is that this is a time to really believe and take seriously your dreams and put that first and foremost. Sagittarius is a sign of deep optimism and hope and big vision. And so Mercury here, it's like workshopping all the ways we treat ourselves. Do we take our dreams seriously in a way that is loving toward them with respect, with awe, with curiosity? There's going to be a huge emphasis on that and thinking about the ways that we have maybe stopped ourselves or cut ourselves off from that big dreaming. That's going to be a huge theme. I'm going to get more into that later in the month when Mercury retrograde begins, and we'll do a little Mercury retrograde and Sag review together, and I'll, I'll offer up some rituals and some support for that later this month. But I just want that to be there. Just thinking about that has a huge theme all the way into the new year because it is going to be working with us quite profoundly. The other thing happening here is that Mars moving into Leo energy on November 3rd. And 
once again, Mars is going to be working on this big retrograde starting in December. It's going to be moving through both Leo and Cancer. But here in November, we're going to be working with Mars in Leo. And this is also about our motivation, our creative urges, our desire to create and build beautiful things. And because Leo is so much about the inner artist, the creative, the visionary, what comes from our heart space, what motivates us from our heart space, that's Mars in Leo. So what creative urges have been repressed that we've been putting on the back burner? It goes really hand in hand with that Mercury and Sag work. What expectations or structures need to change or more accurately reflect your inner world? How can you get your inner and outer worlds more in alignment? What does your inner artist, your inner child need right now in this life, in this visioning of what's next and the foundations that you're building? And also, I think the Mars retrograde in general, especially during the times that it's working in Leo and in this forward phase right now where it's moving forward through Leo, there's this process going on about the way we express ourselves and our expressions and those may be changing or being remembered from times past. And it's just going to be a really fascinating time working with this fire energy in such a profound way. And of course, also, I mentioned this truly every single video that we sit down, I mentioned Pluto moving into Aquarius. It's kind of the big thing right now, you know, it's really the, the main event in November, but it's also really interesting just keeping in mind this November that we are walking through that doorway of Pluto moving from Capricorn into Aquarius on the 19th and staying in Aquarius for 20 years. So it's an interesting time to, to, it's like things are dissolving and new foundations are coming into place. And with that is just, there's a lot of transmutation and a lot of mystery happening within that. And that's just a part of it. So don't stress too much if you're feeling that. Um, a card wanted to come out it was the Ten of Wands, or Swords, the Ten of Swords, of course. Uh, that That is very perfect for ending on that note of Pluto in Aquarius beginning. And once again, I'm going to come back and we're going to have a sit down this month and talk about Pluto in Aquarius and what, what to do with that. But Ten of Swords is very much the end of a cycle, the release of something, the exhale from a season of life and the struggles with it and moving into the next phase. And one of the things I love about Ten of Swords is that it suggests a sunrise in the background after a very dark night of the soul. And so it's a it's a card of deep hope, um, King of Swords. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Sitting here at the end of October, feeling quite affected by kind of world events and What's going on here in this experiment that we're all doing together? It's a it's a strange thing to be doing a reading in this moment, I would say. But um, here we are. And Six of Pentacles. What's so beautiful with these cards, and we'll just talk through them a little bit here, is this sense of peace and balance. I love those words, peace and balance. So like I said, Ten of Swords, very much endings, beginnings. There's the ending of this, this scene right here, a costume, an identity being released, an expectation being released, a way of having to vision our world being released, and an opening to what wants to come in next, an opening to what we are coming into. And not so much in this version of the Waitsmith, Smith, but in the more classic one, you'll see that there's like a black sky and the sunrise is coming way in the distance of the horizon. And I think that's very much the way I feel about November. It's it, it, it has both of those elements to it. But what I really love is these two cards right here, because these cards, when I was talking about that centered voice, that's not the scattered, come on, you can do it, but like the you're safe here to take one more step. That's very much this energy. King of Swords brings decisiveness, clarity, wisdom, and has a lot of the same kind of posture as like the justice card. 
and I think is very deeply tied to justice and themes of justice and and cutting through to the knowing, the honesty, the clarity. And just, you know, when you know something, it's not like you have to spend time analyzing it and doing pros and cons list. You just know. That's very the king of swords. And understanding that in that knowing we're responsible for building a foundation that reflects that and beginning that process as slowly as we need to and yet beginning it. And then, of course, Six of Pentacles is a card of balancing and rebalancing and reharmonizing our priorities, our, our needs, as well as our gifts and resources. So this is a reminder that giving and receiving is very important at this time with our communities, with the people around us, doing both, right? Allowing others to give to us as well as giving. And I think this is also an energetic process that we're doing internally when it comes to what are we prioritizing? Where are we putting our energy? Are we way overextending in certain places and in other places just hoarding away? And how does that feel? Where are we feeling overextension and underextension or hoarding? And just exploring that. So it's really fascinating because all three of those cards for me are about recalibration and coming to understand how in this changing world and our changing selves, there are ingredients that we are coming to know in a very different way. And that's so fascinating to me to see those cards. So tell me, how are you feeling at the beginning of this November? I just, it just still feels so strange to me to sit here knowing this November could be one of those months where the world changes in really intense ways that I cannot foresee sitting here. And it'll be strange to know this video will still be there. This chat will still be there as we move through that. And so I think what's interesting is to, to hear from you all what's coming up for you thematically in life? Are you going through a huge season of transformation? Are you going through a huge season of knowing where you understand there's a journey to get to the next thing, but like it's calling you and that knowing is strong? Are you in the awkward phase of transmutation where it feels a little bit like failure? It feels a little bit like a void. It feels a little bit like a vacuum. Are you trying to motivate yourself to get out there and do things, but like feeling this other quality of needing to quietly sit with those seeds that are deep down in the earth. Um, I'm feeling all of that. <laughs> I'm feeling all of that and then some. And I just love hearing from each of you about what that's feeling like as well, because it helps us release shame and judgment toward ourselves when we can share about those things. So it's so, so helpful. If you would like to join me uh, over on Patreon every week, I do a little chat like this, but it's more specifically about the week we're in. I give journal prompts and reflections, and we're also still moving through the minor arcana and the wild rhythms of life and how to really accept our rhythmic natures and how each of us has a unique way we connect with those things and those themes in our lives. So I'd love to see you for that. It's a 12 week series and we're about halfway through right now as I'm sitting here recording and they'll be available to watch and catch up on for as long as you want. You can also join my magic makers where we meet up every month on zoom and we talk through an aspect of life and explore and uncover a relationship to different planets, different archetypes, different storytelling. So I'd love to see you there. And as always, I love it when you're here. Every comment, every conversation we have here is so meaningful, and I just really appreciate this space. Let me know how you're feeling about November, and I will see you back here. We have so many conversations coming up this month. Mercury retrograde, Mars retrograde, Pluto in Aquarius. I don't even know how I'm going to wrap my head around all this, but we're going we're gonna to get into it. So be sure to stick around and subscribe so that you don't miss any of those chats. I will see you back here so very, very soon. My beautiful friends, space blobs, sparkly blobs, and beyond. Mm -hmm.